and we are getting ready for round five of Grand Prix Orlando 2012. It is day one. As you can see, the format is standard. And Melson Goodlow is facing Conley Woods. Rich Hagen and Sheldon Menery with you for this one. Would be funny if the Channel Fireball sleeves were on Melson's deck instead. <laughs> I think it's Conley can probably choose between multiple sets of sleeves to, to correctly advertise his own columns. He's a pretty hard-working guy in the, in the writing department. So, Nelson is on your left. There he is. And I wonder he what looks, it feels he like. He looks a little awestruck, yeah, I'm going to tell you. I was going to say, I wonder what it's like to sit down and play against a big name and someone that very likely you were watching in the top eight of Worlds. There he is, Conley Woods. As we said, very much all business now, Conley. And that is exactly the uh, expression that he had through Worlds. Nelson Goodlow is uh, going to get us rolling. It was either a probe or a ponder. I'll be a ponder for the, for the one blue one guesses. Tap land from Conley. Second lamp for Goodlow. And this is a probe. So we see a pair of Green Sun Zenith. Three land including an Ink Moth Nexus. We see a Primeval Titan. And top of the screen. Cidic Slime. Ah, okay. Five saw, mana utility. So Melissa uses them very, very effectively last round in. Uh, keeping Ryan's mana base weak. We have a general idea of Conley's plan. I would like a green sun zenith, zenith for not very many. I want to imagine we, we might see a bird of paradise. There it is. That's a card that has fluctuated in excitement over the years. It certainly has. You look at Noble Hierarch coming out and people are like, eh, birds, eh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, they keep coming their way back in. Uh, Conley has titled his deck Traitor Ramp. Because uh, that's what Glissa is. She's a traitor. It says it, says it right in the name. You, could, you, you know these things. Yeah, the, I remember the time. I mean, Birds of Paradise used to be a pretty expensive. It was it was a premier a premier rare, wasn't it? Absolutely. It was. You, you opened up your sixth edition pack, right. and you, you I'm sure, apart from Wrath of God, you wanted a bird. You wanted a bird. Pretty much, they were they were the big two. There's four mana. Another Green Sun Zenith gets mana, mana leaked. leaked. Go away. And of course, you can see the Green Sun Zenith in the graveyard at the top. It doesn't get shuffled back in Not very when it's often. counted. It's a Geist. So Conley might be already a little on the ropes here. But the Acidic Slime takes out the Dual Land. And? So Melson playing Delver Blade, like many people are. Interesting, Charles Gendy talking about you have to play four Geist of St. Trap. Uh, Melson's got three, uh, so potentially he loses the Geist War, right. um, as uh, Gendy talked about. And again, TCG player, your pairings for round one have been posted. Please find your tables and take your seats. So Conway has five cards in hand. Nelson still has a, a little idea about some from that early Gataxian probe. Looks like and prime time has let's arrived. Get to six. And there's my primeval Titan. You know, if you wanted to, during your visit here, mm -hmm. you could go over to Disney Hollywood Studios uh -huh. and eat at the 50s Primetime Cafe. Really? Mm -hmm. well, that sounds cool. I know quite a, quite a lot of the judges went, uh, some of them were referring to this as GP Hogwarts. Oh, yes. And were going to uh, Orlando Studios for the uh, Universal the Studios, Potter, right. Yeah. Uh, rides and things there. I think they had a very good time. Well, I mean, they, they, chose to, they chose to go to Universal Studios instead of staying in, in Tampa and going to Armada Games for 
EDH League on Thursday night. So straight up, straight up. I, I think I'd probably feel a little betrayed by that. <laughs> So, Conley is on the ropes. But he has a lot of mana. Ah. I think that bird might get pressed into blocking service at some point. It's uh, going to be a struggle against Mr. Invisible Stalker. That's not going to happen. Yeah, Conley might need a... Hexproof you can cope with. Hexproof yeah. and unblockable, more of an issue. More of an issue. Now Conley. Attacks with his Titan and Nexuses. Next eye. What do you think about Conley's pace of play here? He's, I mean, it seems like he's really charging forward. He plays pretty briskly quite a lot of the time. I, I think part of that is the channel fireball room as a whole, although I mean in some ways they divide in two in that you have your somewhat more measured David Ochoa, Josh mm -hmm. Adler Layton, um, and maybe, maybe Ben Stark, although his plays are pretty crisp. Yep. And then on the other end you have Conley, um, you have uh, you have LSV, you have Paolo, Owen particularly, mm -hmm. who do not muck around. Right. Um, they're, they're straight in there. And Brian Kibler, of course, when he's playing with them, is, is just blistering. Um, and Shuhei, when he tests with them, similarly, Martin mm -hmm. User. So, uh, you know, get the games in is their general mode. And you, and you play the way you practice. Conley reaches out, takes out land. So Ghost ordering in the multi-land again. Nelson at 14, Conley at 10. Two poison for Nelson. I, I, think, I think those two poison counters might be the significant point the in this mode. game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the damage is not going to hurt. The damage from like the Primeval Titan, I think, is, and the maybe even the um, Citic Slime aren't going to be a terrible thing, but I, it, it looks like if you run the numbers here, Conley's going to have to win via the poison. So we go back to Melson with his invisible stalker. Do not adjust your sets. It isn't sealed. It isn't draft. It's standard. The stalker is doing the business. Conley puts a counter on. Again, that's a big pile of mana. Certainly a green sun zenith is looking out there from the graveyard. It's, uh, Conley looks like he's... Now he's, he's gone into the tank a little bit. Nelson has three cards in his hand. Some reasonable chance that... Vapor Snag. Any instant is really good for him because it, it pumps up the pike. So, in we come again. Primeval Titan, trigger. The lands continue to thin. Dragon Skull Summit. And he's attacked with the, the, the one ne Nexus. Yep. I'm just going to change. It doesn't like the Dragon Skull Summit.
Nelson doing a count on Conley's lands, which two, four, six, eight, eleven, twelve, if you count the attacking Nexus. And there is Curse of the Traitor. We have a Ratchet Bomb in play. So you have both halves of the, I won't say comedy combo, but <laughs> both the Abbott and the Costello. The Abbott and the Costello. Haunting, Midnight Haunting from Nelson. And a bit of a snag. Finally thinking about tapping that for you. Guess not. So Conley at six. Nelson at eleven. Goes in with the team. So Conley is going to activate to put his two Nexus in the way of the two Midnight Haunting tokens. And the second counter goes on to Ratchet Bomb. I believe Invisible Stalker costs two. Right. He's got a lot of mana. This is this is the operative turn. Obviously, he's at one. Probably uh, time to do something. It's time. It's time to do something. Conley, Conley has a quick look at this. Yeah, yeah, something like that. See, uh, Steve said in doing text coverage in the background of Melissa Latour against Shuhei Nakamura. So you read all about there round five. And Conley piles in with both Primeval Titan and Glissa. Is Conley playing... He is playing Black Sun Zenith. That's about his only out here, isn't it? And he's got the rest. So it looks like Conley didn't have quite enough in the tank there. Nelson takes the lead. There you see him playing, as I say, Delva Blade. The cyborg, let's see if we've got anything interesting in there. We've got a single gut shot, a pair of phantasmal image. We've seen already what they can do. Celestial purge, mm -hmm. uh, double oblivion ring, triple timely reinforcements, couple of revoke existence. I guess the interesting one is the steel sabotage, so the chance to uh, very cheaply deal with artifacts. Right. Not sure that tempered steel is going to be massively popular this weekend, but there are other artifacts out there, as for example, Ratchet Bomb, Solemn Simulacrum. Um, various swords. Various swords. Uh, and pikes. And, and pikes. It used to be pikes. everything with swords, but now, now they've mm. kind of branched out into... Into, what, what, what into they, pole arms. What, I was going to say, what do they call them in D&D? Pole arms. Pole arms? Is that arms. awesome? It always struck me, when, when I was a kid and played D&D, it always struck me that you should always... It was like the, the first thing you could buy that was astonishingly cheap was this six-foot pole yeah. that you could just walk in front of you, tapping the floor the whole way <laughs> to, like... I'm just like searching for traps," said the thief. No, the, tech, the, the technology. The technology is clearly to get a bag of chickens before you go into the dungeon, right? And then throw the chickens down the hallway in front of you to set up off the traps. Oh, so like, so with like pressure traps and everything, <laughs> right? And then like, if, it, if it's a fire, it's it's like, <laughs> yeah, like you have lunch. chicken. You have lunch. Awesome. <laughs> See how these things go? You gotta think. I had not thought. I mean, I was. 12. Gamers have to think about these things. Yeah, so I, had, I, I didn't play DD as a gamer. See, when played, you were 12, I was grown up already. Ah, so. uh, okay. For that, really? 
I turned 50 this year. You never did. I did. Good God. That's astounding. Actually, last year, I guess. Now that we're into, yeah. as you say, 2012. Uh, one interesting choice, I think, in Conley's sideboard is yep. the Nihil Spellbomb. Okay. Chance to ditch a graveyard. Yep. Which is really well. significant against the bikes. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, he's got a Tree of Redemption, uh, as uh, Melissa did. A uh, Liliana of the Vale, a Garrick Primal Hunter. Another Ratchet Bomb. Uh, the fourth Black Sun Zenith. A couple of Batterskull. Lone Ancient Grudge. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what Conley's... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, sideboard package looks like here. Well, the good news is, he's gonna all thing, as long as he isn't camera shy, yes. he will come on and uh, tell you all about it after this round. Uh, we're going to let Conley sit with Sheldon and find out a little bit about what's going on with his deck, how he arrived at the choices, a little bit about the sideboard, uh, and also uh, perhaps look, look back at the World Championship from two very different perspectives uh, and forward, and also talk a little bit perhaps about some of the cards from Dark Ascension. We might uh, dial up magicthegathering.com and uh, get Conley to talk a little bit. Perhaps we'll start off with the white cards. That's where the, the colour circle kicks us off, colour wheel. Uh, so uh, we'll get Rashad Miller to dial up magicthegathering.com so we can all see at home and uh, you can check out the cards that have been spoiled. Jar of Eyeballs, one of the best flavors ever. Gotta love that. Not sure the cards up to much. Yeah, I, I would. I would like to for a name a name that's as awesome as Jar of Eyeballs. I would really love to see a a more interesting card. I think. I think it said. I mean, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I think it said in four years' time, shoot it through the top nine cards of your deck. <laughs> it was some, something like that. Is is how it felt on yeah. first reading. I think every my what fun along the way. Yes, the um, the card that's getting talked about a lot looks like Conley's uh, waiting for Nelson the Mulligan. Uh, the card that everybody at the local sh at the local shop is uh, is talking about is the Lich that got spoiled this week. Okay. Uh, black blue. We'll wade our way through. All the way down. Feel the, feel the joy of having iPads at our disposal. Haven Gull Lich. Yeah. Three blue black. It's a zombie wizard. It's mythic rare. Four four. Doesn't fly. The ability. One colon. See, if I didn't have you in the booth, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even bother being that formal about it. But, you know, colon. we need to know that the whole colon means there's the cost. It's one. Means you can do it. So. You may cast a target creature card from a graveyard. A graveyard. A graveyard. A. A graveyard. A graveyard this turn. When you cast that card this turn, Haven Gold Lich gains all activated abilities of that card until end of turn. Oh, and by the way, you can do that as many times as you like. It's not a tap ability. It's nope. not a activate this ability only once right. as a sorcery. It's just straight up. You cast it for five late game. You still have to, yeah. You still have to pay for the, the card, but... Yeah. For example, um, even in standard, Solemn Simulacrum. Yep. That's pretty saucy. It's an it's a very it becomes a very interesting the Lich becomes a very interesting um, mirror match card. Uh-huh. You know, when you're playing the mirror using that guy. I know for a fact that he's you know, it looks like Nelson has gone to five. And Conley's now going. Looks like Conley's going to five. Going away. So a little bit dysfunctional yeah. for game two. I was. Oh, this, 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 the first, this is the first Mulligans that we've seen in our three rounds of coverage. It brings up the point that knowing when to Mulligan, also a significant magic skill. A huge. And, and I know that you were watching some of last week uh, from. Austin, and something that uh, BDM latched onto, uh, and was something that I had not really spent a lot of time thinking about, and was fascinating to me. Is we talked to a lot of the pros, and 
in a way, how their mulligan philosophy reflects who they are mm -hmm. as people. Um, and so th the idea of, you know, so it's something that Conley was has worked on very hard because he never met seven cards he didn't like. Right. Uh, you know, and, and they've, they've kind of, one of the things that Channel Fireball has brought to him is uh, a discipline to be able to say, there are six that are better than these seven. Right. Um, and uh, then you look at someone like Paul Rietzel, who you know, wants to be on the play all the time and make a guy on turn one off mm -hmm. his planes. Um, interesting little, little byline. I got a message from a, a friend back at home who's testing for modern. Uh, and he just sent me a deck list. I'm like, okay, what are you sending me today? Uh, Paul Rietzel's winning deck list from Pro Tour Amsterdam, uh, which of course was not modern, right. was extended. Right. And he just went, these 75 cards, all legal in modern. Very nice. I'm like, really? Really? Mm. Brave the elements. Things like that. Okay. okay. I have a look at that. So, Paul reads a story. Yep. 2000, late 2001, early 2002. So, he's still pretty young. I say, yeah. So he's... And uh, I go to head judge GP. Aust it's either Austin or in Houston. Now I'm lost. I'm lost in Texas. Texas. And on, I'm, you know, I'm there on Friday, and I'm wandering around the hall. And there's a standard tournament on Friday night, and a lot of people are encouraging me. Well, you know, you're here. Why don't you play in the standard tournament? It's like, yeah, you know, obviously I came to work this weekend. I didn't bring a, I didn't bring a deck. Well, Paul happens to be there. He's like, here, I'll lend you my Goblin Trenches deck. Oh, I love Goblin Trenches. I won the tournament. Genius. <laughs> Goblin Trenches are, you know, you made tokens. Yeah. And, and this was from a time when uh, tokens weren't in packs. Yes. So uh, I just had uh, Plains and Mountains with the letters of Goblin Trenches on. So you'd like make the first turn, yeah. like, give me a G, yeah. give me an O. <laughs> and, you know, no one, everyone conceded before you got to the chis yeah. of trenches. Sure. Because once you got to Goblin Trend, they were in trouble. All right, looks like both players are keeping with the five. And we're going to get a look at what Conley has. I oh, so it was six. Oh, it was six. So you see Grave Titan front and center, Sphere of the Suns, Land. No, it was fine. No, Conley drew. Ah, yeah. Nelson writing it all down like any good player should. Once again, without slowing the match down. Sphere, so it gets its counters. You see the dice go on. Three. Ponder from Nelson. So the way that Conley's deck works in terms of what's missing is you don't have the Inferno Titans. That's what gives him room for things like the Black Sun Zenith uh, to an extent. He's, he's got a couple of Gets of Verdict in there that's a little bit different. Um, that's kind of where he found his space. Conley taking an interesting posture on that turn by putting his cards down, cards down and staring at his opponent. Mm -hmm. Solemn Simran Arkham gets Mana Leaked. By Melson. We missed a land drop here. Yeah. Which, when you're the control deck. It's really and not a good Rub salt in and says, uh, So, uh, <laughs> since you haven't got any land, I thought I might go and get some more, which I'm not going to give you. Right. I'll, I'll have it instead, thanks. But there'll still be a balance in the universe of how many lands are supposed to be on the table. Sure. You missed one, I'll get an extra one. Should be 5 4, we'll call it 6 3. Yeah, right. That seems much fairer. Right. And that's despite the mana leak on a solemn. Right. So we see, if one can see an invisible stalker, we see an invisible stalker. Who didn't last long? No. Now there's the great Titan. Titan.
Conley going into the red zone. And another grave tight. And more Conleys. And more Conleys. And midnight. Horn Ting. Pair of one ones for Melson. Is Melson going to start There's getting in the there? There's the pike. Attack. He's going to get in this one. It's got a fair old chunk in the graveyard yeah. down there. It's a, it's a plan that he's, he's, that he's going to run. He doesn't have a lot of choice at this point, really. I mean... Yeah, he can't just sit there and can't just sit there and, and wait to get blocked. So Conley will turn Conley and Conley and Conley and Conley into the red zone. The Conley squad, as it were. Mm. Yep. See anything for one? It's a bit of a beating for Melson. The thing is, when you look at the board for Melson, sitting there with all these blue and white lands, you think, oh, he gets to untap and Day of Judgment. Right. But that's not what Melson's deck does. Melson is this aggro deck. It's a, you know, on, on one level, four Delver, four Snapcaster, three Invisible Stalker, three Geist of St. Traft, and some Tempo cards. There is no Day of Judgment lurking in the wings. Doesn't seem like he's got too many good plans left. I guess timely reinforcements is maybe the best he can do right now. I'm going to use his ghost quarter. Cut down on Nelson's available white mana. And there is Nelson, who is struggling here in game two. Conley one up. says I'd like to have a look at the top three I confidently predict there'll be no day of judgment yes. <laughs> but there may be a timely reinforcement he may have another he, he may have another turn yeah Conley's got four guys that are one ones because of the counters and he's in Melson's at five so he might have some time in this game Uh, double Pike doesn't do much at this point. On the untaps. Working those cards furiously. No one can kind of out furious Brian Kibler, though. <laughs> Keeps ultra pro and pro and sleeves that way. Yeah. They just wear out every third round or so. The gentleman yesterday invited me to shuffle very carefully, which I thought, well, I wasn't playing vintage, I was playing sealed deck. Turned out he was concerned about the well-being of his sleep. <laughs> right. <laughs> Got to make him last. Apparently. Conley right to the gravesite. I'm going to see yet more. I wonder if he's got enough Conleys to go around. Because games don't usually get to the point where you have that many Grave, grave Titan tokens running about. This room really is the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> yes. Which, of course, is coming in Dark Ascension. And there's the match. So, Conley Woods, a very small little smir smirkette. A smirkette. So, we're going to get him over here for a chat. We'll, we'll talk about... Uh, some of the choices he made for the deck. Yep. Uh, uh, maybe his sideboard package in the, in the match. What he thinks of the Dark Ascension. Mm -hmm. 